peptide just means a chain of amino acids. Um, but let's just get this um, out. So, because there's a lot of interest in this now, um, right? You need to sleep, exercise, good nutrition, uh, good social interactions. You need to do all that stuff, right? You're never going to optimize testosterone, muscle, fat loss, et cetera, if you're not doing those things. You need to, everyone needs to do that. Then there's the question of like supplementation. And there are some good supplements that are legal, things like Tonga Ali, Fadogia, Aggressus, that can boost testosterone somewhat um, and that people get benefit from and don't shut down your own testosterone production or growth hormone production. Then there are drugs, prescription drugs, like growth hormone, testosterone, that people use for testosterone replacement therapy, and then just all out steroids like Anadrol, Oxandrolone, where like you see the guys, you, you know the look, right? I mean, you, you know, the, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and that can be abused, et cetera. Any of those things could be abused, mm -hmm. but, but there's this new kind of wedge in between supplements and prescription drugs that are called peptides. Mm -hmm. And they are a bunch of different kinds. And the ones that are most popular right now in health and fitness it, for use in both males and females are, for instance, things that stimulate the release of growth hormone. They're called secretagogues. It sounds like synagogue, but it's secretagogue. Things like sermorelin, tessamorelin, ipomorelin. They all, you take it as an injection. They can be bought without a prescription or with a prescription. We can talk about what's better. Um, and they're taken before sleep. If you haven't eaten anything for a couple of hours, they stimulate massive growth hormone release, IGF-1, et cetera. They help you re recover faster, fat loss, muscle repair. They also stimulate libido pretty, pretty whoa, substantially. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a miracle. Yeah. What is this? Sir Morellin. Why are so, we not on? How can we? Well, okay. A couple of reasons. One, to get it really good Sir Morellin, you need a prescription, but there are a lot of doctors that will prescribe it. You can work it. on that? Yeah. What if I'm trying to have a baby? Does it fuck that up? It does not disrupt. So testosterone will disrupt sperm production. You can offset that. So let's say you were to take testosterone. Um, it would shut down your own sperm production. Testicles shrink. Some people more than others, but some people will take HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin. That can stimulate the testes to continue to make sperm. HCG, incidentally, used to be, now they make it in a laboratory, you inject it, used to be um, collected from pregnant women's urine. So in the bodybuilding community, people used to literally like try and drink pregnant women's urine. There was a black market for it. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, I figured that story was going to widen some eyes. Um, but did you notice I went in? Yes. Right? <laughs> exactly. This uh, is kind of exactly. Yeah. So people can maintain fertility on uh, testosterone, but sermorelin will not disrupt fertility. Um, why wouldn't you take it? Okay, well, there is this issue that, first of all, you need a prescription to get it clean. There are sources online where you can just buy it without a prescription. It's a little sketchy. You go to these sites and they're like, they say, Venmo me, but Venmo me under this name. So yeah. it's kind of gray market. The problem with those is you don't know about the purity. You don't know if you're getting what you think Let's you're getting. Let's assume that we have some connections yeah. we can get sure. the pure MDs shit. will prescribe Sermorellin. Yeah, I've used Sermorellin before. I, I actually still, I'll, listen, I'm really open about this because I never want to be like a natty or not video on me. I'll just say like not, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, not meaning I'm, I take Sermorellin about three or five nights a week. Um, helps me get into really deep sleep quickly. You get a bit of a IGF one boost. It's great. You recover fat. I never recovered very quickly from exercise. Yeah. I didn't start until I was 45. Um, you look great now. You look like what I thought Lance Armstrong would look like with the steroids. <laughs> you look like what he should Thank look you. like. I can ride a bicycle, but not like him. No. Hey, um, uh, there's another joke there, but I'm not going to make it. What is that? No, no, no. Was, it was, it was no, 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 no. Are we talking about the bulge? <laughs> um, I do be careful. Um, I never met Lance. I'm sure he's a nice guy. There's a guy who eventually, eventually came clean about his... And people still seem to like him, I think. Yeah. They don't wear the wristband, though. took a know. while, but I think wristband's we came, gone. Yeah, we yeah. came around on them. Yeah, instead of live strong, it's sort of like live honest in the, yeah. by not wearing the wristband. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Lance. Um, so, so Sermorellin is— We should all get on this. What is the what is Okay, the, the downside is it, it causes growth of all things, right? So if you have, for instance, a small cancer growing on your pancreas, it will accelerate growth of that cancer. Now, so you tend to want to cycle these things to in, in frequent use, you know, five nights a week or three nights a week or occasional use. You know, look, I'll tell you right now, a lot of the bodies you see in Hollywood films are on peptides. Have to be. Because right now the look isn't really super huge, a yeah. la like 80s professional wrestling. Yeah. The look is, you know, the women are a little bit leaner and stronger than yep. in past years. The men are sort of in that. Middle range, yep. you know, it's more about definition and, yep. you know, okay. 
Um, Sermorel, and then there's also something called BPC-157, which is actually based on a gastric peptide. turns out that there's a gastric peptide that we all make that can promote healing of tissues. And I've talked to Joe a lot about this. There's not a lot of data on this, whereas there are a lot of data on sermorelin. But BPC, like I had an L5 compression and I was always like in pain standing up from a, a dumb thing. I don't deadlift anymore. I just made a dumb mistake um, in terms of form. And massage, heat there, electric therapy, the whole thing. Two injections of BPC-157. Look, if it was placebo, okay, I'll take it. Gone. Mm. Gone. BB, and the BBC 157 is remarkable. A few years ago, a guy um, tore his Achilles right before the Olympics, came back. BBC 157 was implicated in that. So again, you want to get good, clean sources. There are physicians that will prescribe these. Again, these aren't going to shut down fertility or testosterone production. Um, and then there's kids wonky or anything like that. If not I that it. we are aware of, not that we're aware of your kids are going to be, I'll just come. Okay. your kids just are just going to have so much fire in them. You know what? I, I need so. to take something. So I have something to blame it on when my kid comes out. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like a we beautiful couple. Getting. You have all this energy. You lived <laughs> yeah. in New York. Like no. you're going to raise them in New York. I it hope, was right? the pep time. Yeah. You're going to raise them in New York. I hope. <laughs> No, I don't you know, know. We'll see. I think we'll it was see. the late Fi- Philip Seymour Hoffman that said in his will that his kids wouldn't get any money if they lived outside of New York or Chicago or London because he that. wanted their brain to develop in a, yeah. in a sensory rich environment. Is that yeah. where he grew up? Because yeah. I'm going to raise think my so. kids in a different place. Than yeah. where <laughs> well, he didn't. Do, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, he, he unfortunately uh, tapped out through unfortunate circumstances. But I think there is something to having that intensity. Well, you know, I mean, kids from who aren't from New York, they come here and they hear a siren go by and they're like, ah, yeah. you know, my niece grows up in a big city and she's like totally comfortable in noise and chaos. She's super yes. calm. I see the kids here. They're just like, whatever. Yeah. You know, it's like they just can cope. You take a kid like that, you put them in California and they're going to run the company. Yeah. Because it's just, they have so much energy and so much force. Yeah. You know, and everyone else is like dissolving into a puddle of tears because it's too much. We're yeah. staying here, yeah. babe. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so, okay. So there's BPC, there's Sir Morellin, there's BPC-157. There's, and then there's this whole landscape now of like TB500, et cetera. There's a lot of kind of um, cocktails of, of peptides. I know less about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are far less data on that. Now, as long as we're having this discussion, and because of this audience, I have to assume has heard of TRT and testosterone replacement. There's a lot evolving there. I'm hearing about guys going on really young. I really worry about that because it will shut down your sperm production unless you, you won't be able to conceive kids unless you're doing something to offset that, like taking HCG. And that should always be done with a doctor. The new way of doing this is not to get one shot every two weeks of massive testosterone, but taking smaller doses every third or fourth day, dividing that up and then doing the HCG as well. That's very common. But TRT, you know, the R is replacement therapy and the range of testosterone is really broad. Mm -hmm. And I, what I would think, I, what I think guys should do is I started weight training when I was 16, started, I was running and weight training. And then when I got to Santa Barbara, I was more like weight training and hanging out a bit. And then I got serious about studies. But the point is that you want to train on your own hormones, get learn good sleep, good nutrition, good habits, and also live your life, right? You're not going to like not have a beer or two every once in a while at age 22 just because you might not recover as well. Like, right. okay, if you have a tendency towards alcoholism, be careful. But, you know, let, let's live your life is my, my uh, stance. But once you have all those things in place, Let's say you already have kids and people are feeling tired and more sluggish, then testosterone replacement therapy can make sense for some people. The problem is a lot of people think if a little is good, more is better. And that's not, and that's not good. And also it's what you do with that. You still have to run, eat well, yeah. you know, preserve your cardiovascular health. Yeah, it doesn't replace you know, those yeah, things. Yeah, you still need blood work to make sure your prostate antigens aren't going crazy and stuff like that. Yeah. I hear about young guys who are just like, you know, they're slamming Viagra and testosterone. It's like, listen, that, that, that's not going to play out very well over time. Right. Like see what you can do naturally with yeah. hard work and dedication and balance. Yeah. And then over time you can explore things. But the peptides are interesting. They're kind of a, you know, middle ground where you're not risking as much in terms of long-term fertility issues. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not going to, they're not going to give you a ton of acne or something or, you know, make someone look crazy um, like they could if they uh, abuse steroids. And women are using them a lot more now because they're milder. They don't have these so-called androgenic effects. They're not going to deepen the voice. They're not going to create facial hair for women, that kind of thing. But yeah, they, they certainly work. They're banned in sports for a reason. 
Oh, we're doing Although, it. Although last night, oh, listen, we're doing it. listen, I don't want to get so beat up. I don't want to get beat up by any of the MMA crowd, but rat. I can look at some. I mean, some of the athletes are either genetic freaks or they're using in the off season. I mean, I think I've seen some photos of Conor McGregor now. I mean, and he he's massive. big. Yeah, he's big. So either he has ridiculous genetics. Yeah, or he's on something. And listen, no shame in that. I mean, it's his life. He can do what he wants. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a runner who ran for Stanford, I think still holds the American record for marathon, for fastest U.S. marathon, Ryan Hall. He was like a stick, finished running, got out, started lifting weights. He's a beast. Looks like something out of a Marvel movie. Really? Mostly because he's just eating and deadlifting and squatting now. He still runs a little bit, but he's not running yeah, a gazillion yeah. miles a week. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. So, yeah. So Look, the peptides yeah. are interesting, but we, we make sure you get a clean peptides. source. There's some good sources like TaylorMade. You need a prescription is a good pharmacy for peptides. These are clean because you We're don't want to go get- to where the guy you get yours from. Yeah, I, I mean, I can, yeah, I can yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I can give up. I mean, listen, there, there is a physician who's doing this kind of work online. We'll keep it on the low. You know? Let us get yeah. cute before everybody yeah, else I mean, gets cute. But and it's not illicit, you know. I mean, he'll make you do blood work and that kind of thing. Yeah. But I'll do. I, I do take somorelin about three to four nights a week. You can't take yeah. it every night because it has less of an effect. Right. Um, now, and then there's this whole landscape of gray market. In the old days, we're not doing that shit. Yeah. In the old days, it was the big drug out here. Um, in the club scene was GHB, gamma hydroxybutyrate, that's which the, increased uh, growth hormone. That that's rape? what River that's Phoenix. The, that's the date rape drug, right? Uh, that's rohypnol. Rohypnol. Yeah. Isn't that GHB? GHB, uh, no, GHB stimulates growth hormone release. It's a hypnotic, and it was big in the club scene, and then it became big in the kind of sex club scene. Mm. Um, and then when River Phoenix died, it became implicated in that, and they actually used to be able to buy it at GNC. Get the fuck out. Yeah, but not anymore. So they t- but it turns out River Phoenix, you know, sadly had heroin, cocaine, marijuana, alcohol, um, and GHB in his system, which is obviously, you know, very, you know. Wait, very is that poppers? What's poppers? Uh, poppers, I think, were something of, I don't know. Oh, I feel, I you know, know, the two drugs that have totally disappeared are, are quaaludes and poppers. Yeah, quaaludes um, are gone. Quaaludes. I don't even know what a quaalude is. Me neither, but it looks fun in that whole yeah. right? yeah. I heard yeah. it was like a horse tranquilizer. Yeah. Apparently Bad there's, idea. Bad uh, idea. Actual finite supply of, from Wolf of Wall Street, which I rewatched recently. Great movie. But they're, they're gone because people just took them all. Uh, and it was supposed to, I think, help you sleep or something. But then they found out if you stayed awake past a certain point, you got, got super fun. high and it got fun. That yeah. sounds like. GHB. Um, yeah. And remember, ketamine used to be a, a recreational drug, right? Um, Still cat, is. Mm-hmm. Cat. K- yeah, all these drugs, that, listen, if people are going to exploit it with a medical doctor, I'm not saying that to protect me. I'm saying that to protect you, being yeah. in the audience. Like, you have to, these are not things you want to cowboy, especially with all the fentanyl. Yeah. Stuff happening now is is so crazy. I mean, you just die the first time. That just because yeah, I remember growing up, they said if you smoke crack once, you're gonna be addicted for life. Remember that was the public message. Um, it does seem like you can die from fentanyl first time. Yeah, yeah. Sorry yeah, to go happened. dark there, no, but no, it's happened but, to yeah. a bunch of comedians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. Mine, yeah. Why would yeah. they? Is it true that comedians? They that, thought there was cocaine co- is, is cocaine. common in the, in the comedy scene. I, I mean, think it was. A huge and, in like the 80s. Yeah, and I think it's, sure. it's still a little bit more yeah, now, in LA and stuff I think like that. Cocaine I think. is just like, a, or it was before this fentanyl stuff, it was just a recreational drug. I was surprised. I mean, I'll be honest, I, especially like younger people, how often they were using it. It was really? just like Blimey. every weekend, it was like smoking weed, drinking alcohol, do some well, coke. I, I feel like when I went to college, there was some people smoked some pot, maybe some psilocybin use, but it was really just alcohol. Yeah, it was. For Santa Barbara, it wasn't yeah, a big. Yeah. Um, cocaine scene or no. heroin scene. I'm sure there were pockets of that, but I was never exposed to that. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I think that the, the the peptides thing is interesting. 